Fair uh, use. All right, three, two, one. Thanks for joining. Hope you're doing good today. I uh, came across this video, Four Languages of the Great Pyramid. Um, there's a lot of uh, interesting things in here. Uh, a 130 Chronicle a writer seeing the pyramid in 1332 at 440 goes into another chronicler recording the image of the pyramid being the same the year is 1336 he states only four years later 640 He will state. I think this one's important. Fair use. Important. For the Egyptians, but also for the ancient Greeks, Romans, and Jews. It was a monument without cultural bias that crossed religious belief and something venerated by all. As mentioned, von Sudheim records the same Latin script, but records the name of Decimus Tetianus as Decimus Annius. He ends his passage on the pyramids by saying that these monuments were called by the native population the granaries of Pharaoh. Okay, so there you have these wonders of the world only being called the granaries of the Pharaohs in thirteen fifty seven. The next chronicler starts at 6.40. You heard him bring the chronicler up. He states that the local people call this the Pharaoh's granary. This does not come up once. This comes up later at 7.50. Fair use. Brief excerpts. Huh? Verbatim for the purpose of teaching, research, reporting. Okay. Fair use. Simple people call them Pharaoh's granaries. So the simple people. So it's seven minutes, right? 640 goes into, uh, yeah, 640 leads into saying that these monuments were called by the native Anius. by the native people he ends his passage on the pyramids by saying that these monuments were called by the native population the granaries of pharaoh oh, excuse me. granaries All of, of pharaoh this is confirmed by the travels of sir john mandeville sir As john mandeville here. now mandeville believed the pyramids were tombs but he says how the local simple people come on that's some extra click in there all right mandeville is the third person he brings up. 1357. Okay. So nobody. All right. Nobody. Anciently. There's... Anciently, there's no historian that's writing about the pyramid. In fact, no one's writing about the pyramids until the 1300s. There's, there's, there's a big problem with that. See, they told you, oh, these pyramids were built thousands of years ago, but there's no evidence of that. Carbon data to people that make carbon dating say they're using it wrong. The people that make carbon dating say you can't trust carbon dating. So we're being led in this strange path. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the truth. Okay. So uniquely this video eventually 
at 8.30. It's going to give away pretty good stuff. All right, so. Fair use. You listen close or just watch the screen. Between the pause and was certainly a ceremonial walkway. A Greek inscription so found near the stage. The Sphinx. The Sphinx is known to the Greeks as the Harmachis. Harmachis. Okay. So we we'll just chase the word. Harmachis. Right. And, uh, Listen, this is it. This is everything you could ever want. You can want silver, you can want gold, you can want all that shit. But to take an imaginary arrow and to take an imaginary bow and to point them towards history right at these gods and to let it go. Today, if your mind is free, if it's unlocked, if it's unleashed, you will see something amazing. But, again, if the system has you, there's nothing I can do. So, now I want to show you exactly what the Most High told you from the start to the end. We just read this in Isaiah. They pray to their fathers through statues. So, Let's see if that's true. So the Harmatius is the Egyptian sky god Horus. Okay. This is the Egyptian sky god Horus. All right. Here's another name for him. Rehor Ak. Ah, Horus, who is on the horizon. The Greek form of the Egyptian, right? We didn't even look that one up, so let's add that to the pot. All right, and so here's your children being indoctrinated. We'll get to that later. With Yu-Gi-Oh! Horus. I mean, it's when you drop the ray for Sunray, it ain't that hard. Now they change the name so you don't see whore right up front, right? So, all right, so then this is how we got to Cleopatra, and it's a novel by Haggard. And this is where the image comes up because when you Click on Armachius. Oh, wait, let me see. Let's go back one. Here, over here. This is where the image initially comes up. When you have Armachius up, and you see it's the Sphinx, like they said, but it's their representation of Horus while he's on the horizon. That's what the whole Sphinx is. Nothing more. Now here's a novel, that's where we get the colored black and white image. Again, living in a racist world, under, circum under normal circumstances, that would be an oxymoron. But again, living in a racist world, you get it? So, When we go to the Haramachias horse on the rising, 
on the horizon, right? This is why they do the rise stuff, because it's it's Egypt, right? And this is told all throughout Isaiah, right? He keeps bringing up Egypt, and he tells the Egyptians because they do this, they're going into slavery. They're going to be carried out, but naked. And I want you to think. In this day and age, we are not looking for Mizrahim because the Bible no longer states Mizrahim once Amon comes in, once the Hyksos, who are the Persians. See, this is the same thing that we understood before. When we looked it up, it says the Hyksos are the Persians. Alexander came in to Egypt and killed Darius. When you start looking up the individual stuff, this, then it goes into, oh, no, 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 no. Alexander conquered Egypt, not saying who was on the throne. And then it says, then he went over to Darius, which, which isn't what we read the first time. Again, when you see the kings of Egypt, when do they bring up Alexander? So, it's not like they say. When we go to the Book of Jashir, when we compare the Book of Jashir to history, Alexander would have already conquered Egypt, and then the Exodus would have happened. After Ptolemy, oh, be about the same time because that's the time of the Punic Wars, since the Punic Wars are told to you right there. So, again, looking up Hermachius, interestingly, you get all this stuff about Cleopatra. Now, you'd have to ask if. The Harmachias is about Horus on the horizon. Well, why has it got all these images of Cleopatra? Unless, like, she's, like, author of this idea or this statue that they consider great because it's on the scale of the pyramids. I truthfully don't know right now because I haven't read enough to understand why it goes unto these and I understand when the book by Haggard is brought up. I understand when the book by Haggard is brought up. But again, it's the Harmachias versus the Sphinx. Not Haggard's book. Which is very interesting. Now it could be because Haggard's book revolves around the, the Sphinx. I don't know. I haven't read the book. Again, he'll be giving you excerpts of the book. I noticed it's funny how when it comes to this image, they don't want to give you this image at all, but they sure do want to give you every damn page from the book. Here's page 90, here's 334. All right. If you keep going around, here's an image from, here's an image 142, two, uh, 277. Well, I mean, they give you the whole damn book, but they sure don't want to give you the original cover by Michelangelo. Now, isn't that funny? They got a cover by Michelangelo, like, so, by Haggard went and, you know, grab that and threw it down on there. Now, it's a funny thing. If Haggard throws down this Negress picture of Cleopatra, right, this Negro picture of Cleopatra, right, we know that the Greeks are of Japheth. We know this is Ptolemy's daughter. So, and that's the funny thing. We looked at those pictures of uh, Burroughs Cave, right? If Alexander's over here, then his general Ptolemy is over here too. Remember the guy that looked like George Jefferson? So, here you have the image. And it's complete. You can look at the muscular turning of the, right? Right, here's a shoulder and a breast, and this is what they're trying to mimic. 
And when they try to mimic it, they make it look like her neck's twisted up. You know, you can see her hair is braided into a tight braid. Another braid is being wrapped, wrapped in her hair up here, you know. Now again, these styles come to a lot of melanated people naturally, but because we live in a racist world, there is a, a microwave of white supremacy with what people have been flashed with of images on TV. So, again, yeah, uh, this is what you're given constantly. Constantly. This is the reality. The most famous artist in history drew Cleopatra, and the image is always hidden. Even the most stern racist has to admit there's something wrong with that. The most stern advocate must admit something not right about that. You imagine yourself to be creator of anything. I don't care if you made her a note, a letter. One chapter of a book, a whole book. I don't care if you wrote a guitar riff, a jingle, keyboard jam, a whole song. I don't care if you got a part of a rap, a little bit of a rap. I don't care if you wrote a slogan. I don't care if you just had children and that's it. I don't care if you built a house. I don't care if you built some stairs to a house. Imagine these are your accomplishments. And someone strips them of strips you of your accomplishments and just hands it off to someone else. That literally doesn't exist. I mean, imagine every video I did, somebody took every video, took my image out, and threw a different image in. And then from that point on, every comment came in was to that image, not to the original author. You had children, they live with you, you feed them every day, you go through the turmoil with them. Somebody else claims it. This is why. They weren't given the book. We just looked at the book of Daniel. And if you understand what's going on, it is the release of this book that drove these people to destroy the temple. How else would they understand to be able to analyze the Israelites to defeat them? Studying the book. This Bible is telling you, you got so much time to seal this prophecy because the rest is going to happen. The New Testament, you got books of John, but in the Old Testament, I'm pretty sure he's called Joel. And then they what, just change things about his life and give their rewritten book as what a god spell of Joel and John? So Joel's version of his prophecy is cut down, right? Snipped around, but Revelation, if you look through Revelation, is just telling you it's from Joel. So in reality. In Revelation, the councils that people are looking for, these churches people are looking for, their church is picked by the council. Where does it say the church of Philadelphia in the Old Testament? Where does it say the, the church of Laodicea when the definition of La Laodice is hot and cold, yet Laodicea being neither hot or cold? 
you're playing Hebrew word games with us. I told you most, I told you the New Testament is just a joke. The only thing that's really real in there is the book of Acts. These are the acts that happened to destroy the temple. People are too caught up with it. The, the Christians use the Trinity, but the Trinity is Egyptian. And the Christians use the Son of God. The Son of God is Egyptian. I'm going to prove that today. I'm going to prove you're worshiping a black man. That has nothing to do with God, everything to do with Egypt. The Christians use resurrection. And that's Egyptian. The Israelites learned that leaving Egypt and they just never got rid of it. Grand rising. Every day you get the fuck up and it ain't different from the day before. Unless you got something planned. You know what a grand rising is? Let's say you went to war and somebody used a sword and they chopped your ass into pieces. And then your loved ones came and collected all of you and they wrapped you up like a mummy and they prayed over you, hoping that this wouldn't be the end between you and them. Right? And what do they want you to do? They don't want you to just get up because you're dead. They want you to have a grand rising. People, you have been mentally tricked. If it's not Moab tricking you, it's Amman. And Amman is Egypt because it is the people of Egypt. This is why the Most High, his prophets, aren't saying Mizrahim, Mizrahim when they bring up Egypt because it is the nation without the original people. When Amon comes into Egypt, it is the worship of Amon through different titles. In this place, he's called this. In this place, he's called that. Amongst the Canaanites, he's called Amon, or Al Baal. Amongst the Greeks, he called what? Zeus. He comes in, he steps in, he wins, he's Pharaoh. If it's Zeus, Zeus does this to his grandchildren. Right? Well, Pharaoh can do anything he wants. Pharaoh's doing this to Israelite children. Well, Pharaoh can do anything he wants. That's why God always curses Pharaoh. So, let us look and see what sin cretinism has brought us. So, as we go further, Here's the Haggard novel. So, H. Ryder Haggard, the author of Solomon's Mind and the book She. Now, he is a adventure writer, all right? He, uh, sets his books in exotic locations, predominantly Africa. Because again, at the time, his readers are intrigued with Africa. It was an English writer, exotic locations, and a pioneer of the lost world literary genre. Now, with that being said, throughout their culture, they preached about a world that was lost. And they felt it was in what? Predominantly Africa. He is involved in agricultural reforms throughout the British Empire. Now, he is involved in reform. So, again, this is a time during Britain forming or being reshuffled, reformed into Europe. So, as we go further, 
The story is set in the Paul Ptolemaic era. Again, Ptolemy, I presume, is going to be one of the generals depicted in the statues from Burroughs Cave. Now, what it says, because he's got four generals, so there should be four images besides his. Ancient Egyptian history and it revolves around the survival of a dynasty bloodline protected by the priesthood of Isis. The main character, Harmachias, the living descendant of the pharaoh's bloodline, is charged by the priesthood to overthrow the supposed imposter Cleopatra. Drive out the Greeks and the Romans and restore Egypt to its golden era. Now, if you understand what's going on, it is a story of rebellion. It's a story of nationality. They have oppressors at the time. Greeks, Romans. The Greeks and the Romans, they want the glory of Egypt. They want to be able to solidify themselves in history exactly like the pharaohs of old. And by doing so, they have to live over these people. Well, why? Well, because it turns out not every nation is meant to be oppressed. <laughs> Some people you cannot siphon off of in a parasitic relationship. So, they feel Cleopatra's an imposter to the throne, not that. It's an imposter pretending to be Cleopatra. Cleopatra is one of the Ptolemy's daughters. It's like the ninth or something like that. So, the idea here is, why are the Greeks ruling over the Egyptians? Again, if you're an American Indian, and you're not connected to your tribe, you're a U.S. citizen, you're under the mentality you are being ruled over by foreigners. So this is where they show the priesthood. Now, I've been to the end, do, 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 to the last tabs. So I know this is actually very important. This is too. Now, Horus, Her, Heru, Hor, Har, Ancient Egyptian, one of the most significant ancient Egyptian deities who served many functions. Blah, 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 blah. He was worshipped. That's the important part. He was worshipped. Late prehistoric Egypt until Ptolemaic and Roman time. So, I myself I would say he's even worshipped now. His worship is not centered in one place. His people have been, what, spread? The ancient Egyptians would have worshipped him, so that's Mizraim. Up until the Ptolemy. So that means when the Persians come in as the Hyksos, they are worshiping him too. When Alexander comes in as a Greek, they are worshiping him too. The Greeks take over before the Romans, they're worshiping him too. And of course, they're using these things as ways to put themselves in. Why? Because they know the history. Not because somebody wrote a book years later, a few, a few years later. <laughs> Not thousands of years later, again. If all these people are telling you Egypt exists 
but only in the 1300s. Well, where is it in 1200s? Where are these pyramids before? See, this Africa pyramid shit is when Mandeville sees it. And the other three that he brings up. The rest of the world is not writing about Egypt. When these people take over Egypt, where the hell are the pyramids? Where is pyramids talk about in Persian writing? The amazing pyramids of Egypt. No, it's, it's not. These people, like cockroaches, just saying cockroaches get it everywhere. I'm not saying the people are like, they get into everyone's history. You don't hear some Hindu stories of how great the pyramids were and blah, blah, blah. Look at the Hindu pyramids with all you can, the foundation of the actual pyramid. The face of the pyramids hidden by all the design that's stacked up on the outside. You don't see it chipped away. You don't see it destroyed. You don't see it looted by people. We are we are taught those Hindu people as poor as shit. They sure can defend those temples. But they keep telling you six, uh, 1300. 1332, somebody saw it. 1336. In 1357, he talked to the people. The people said, that's just a granary. Just a granary. This novel says, oh, the worship of, of Horus is, well, it's really just the priesthood. It's right there in the novel. It's right there in the novel. You don't think the Egyptians are, oh, fuck. The Hyksos came in and ruled over us. The Greeks are ruling over us. The Romans are ruling over us. Why can't we rule ourselves? Hmm? Why do these people always have to feed off someone else? The Hellenized rendering of the Egyptian whore market meaning Horus on the horizon, right? This derives, it might derive, from Khufu's pyramid. So, Khufu built a pyramid for grains, and then somebody came along, beep, I'm going to leave that part out because I know the end, and they, and then they, they blah, 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 and now it's, it's, it's all kings are buried there. <laughs> so it's like, it's almost like the Greeks came along one time and saw these pyramids and they were like, oh man, you know what? This stuff's kind of amazing. We should put our dead here. It's almost what it's like. Because I mean, Where's everything else? Where's the castles of Egypt? Where's the houses? Where's the towns? It's, it's just, they don't show you any of this shit for, for, for most things in history. I mean, it's just weird. And don't get me started. If the Civil War is in 1865, they got footage. They got video of the slaves on the battlefield. Not being racist, but they show white people. So the idea that they couldn't show, they, they got, the camera's been around a long, long time. To be able to make movies and add sound later has been around for a long, long time. 
if they have a Civil War recording on the Civil War battlefield, the camera was able to record in normal speed before 1870. Cheap cameras, cheap box cameras, you had to stand in front of that shit for an hour. Sit still, Johnny. So, the Great Sphinx was buried. Not likely. Everybody's seen it get dug out. It was buried up to its neck during the new early kingdom right some some shit like that so if they could see the pyramid in the 1300s 14 14th century then between the 14th century and its discovery it's been sitting barren No one's been using it. Hmm. Right. So. Hor Machet. Har Machet. Hair Machet. Right. So it's Ha Re Machet. Ha Re Machet. So I'm gonna go back. So you see, just so you see this, Horus, yeah, Harmachius, go into Harmachius, and then it brings up Harmachius, uh, Harmachius. Let me see. Let me see if I get that one up real quick. Oh, that's not what I want. I want um, there's Shitopedia. No, nope, it's in the list. All right, so that's why most people don't know, right? This is in Wiley Online Library. Hermachius. Some shit. All right, the man's manifestation of the god Horus, right? Cold folks on the gray sphinx. Now watch this. Now, the other way to spell his name, pronounce his name, let me see where it shows the other pronunciation. So people don't think I'm making some shit up. All right, here you go. Ancient Egypt Online. Hor. Hol. Horamachet. So now we can go over here. Horamachet. Does the same thing? Yeah. Okay. So let me introduce you to Horamachet. Or Horus. Okay. All the black people that sit there and say, all the color folk sit there and say, they worship the Egyptian gods. You can kiss my ass right now. You can kiss my ass twice. Nasty motherfuckers. You man worshiping homos don't even know what you're doing. This, this face, everybody's always. This is this dude's face. Hormachet. This is Hormachet. This is the face on the Sphinx. You can see the cheekbones. This is what they worship. You want to see what Hormachet is? The dude. He was the ancient Egyptian prince and high priest of a nun. He was the prince. This is the son. Okay? He is the son of Pharaoh. Shaba! Wait, what? He is the son of Pharaoh. Shaba! Shaba ranks? Shabaka. Shabaka. Nef. Er, car. 
Nifakar. Shabako, Shabaka, Shaba. Mm. This is what you've been fucking worshiping. So I started worshiping real God, and he started showing me all these fake gods. I started worshiping real God, and he started showing me all these fake gods. And the unique thing is, the way he showed me was through his word and showing me that they're just worshiping their forefathers, the ones that started it all. Just like you go to a building and they got the picture of the guy who started the company up there on the wall taller than he would be in real life like you're paying tribute when you walk by hmm and what what did she say yesterday voting is an act of of uh devotion devotion from a devotee devoted to someone ruling over you vote 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 the ancient Egyptian prince. You don't have to be half cat, half man. All right. And then the uh, dragon boy's a little puppet, a little, little pet chihuahua, Kamiru, Chimera. Right? Har, 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 whore. The chimera who believes is, huh? The chimera's female, too. It's a man that called himself chimera. All the dragon boy, all these the people have been worshiping a dead man whose statue has been hidden from him. He's the son of Pharaoh Shaba, Shabaka, Shaba, Shaba. Shababu, Shabaku, Shababu. This is this is what you worship. This is Horus, right? And this is why the name Tariq is today Egyptian. Constantly used Egyptian. Son Pharaoh Shabaka, and possibly his queen father, son mother. Tabak Ten Amun. So Tabak Ten Amun. So are we gonna? Is this ISIS? Because Pharaoh's, excuse me, Horus' mom is ISIS, right? Horus' dad is Osiris. Is Shaba Osiris? Come on, people. These people, Tambakten, Timbuktu, Tambakten. Come on, people. All right, and this is after Amun done gone on there. That's why it's a black man, not an Arab of Mizrahim. That's why the mama got Amun in there too. Showing. Amun, amen, brother. Showing Amun would have already been there. Moab's brother. So we've been looking for hmm, Amun, but he's been taking the name Egypt. Once he pushed the Mizraim out. So did Amun get kicked out by the Persians? Never seen this shit before. Looks like there isn't any great matches, huh? <laughs> There's the match right there. 
I mean, damn, man. I mean, robot. Robot then went out of its way to say, no, you're just, you don't go down this path. Am I going to get a knock at the door? Robot. Somebody going to come at the door for me for this? You're going to send a droid? You're going to send a drone? You're going to drone strike me, robot? Oh. Try using words that might appear on the page you're looking for, for example, cake recipes. Okay, well, that seems to be the cake I'm looking for. Horus is the son of I, uh, uh, Os Osiris, and so when I look up Shaba, right? So we tried her, and so they're ignoring it there. So let's go back one, and then uh, so Osiris should be the other dude. I right, look, they even got that shit in another language. All right, so let's just go back and just go to his dad, his Shaba. Shaba's open over here. And uh, let's ask if Shaba, before reading and finding out, right? Here they put him back at the 25th dynasty, right? Ah, oh, okay, man. It could be. I, I I don't I don't think it would be since the worship of Horus so early. Again, when you even go and you look for the what's up with that? No, I had something good on here. Oh, the one I opened on Wish. Oh, that's that one doesn't want to open. This one exists, but it doesn't want to open. All right, the wish, blah, 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 group. That's this. So, there, so, <laughs> working in conjunction. Working together. All right, look at this. The son of the Pharaoh, Shabak. I mean, he was married to a woman named Isis, who was the singer of the god Atum. What's wrong, my king? I'm bored. Sing, bitch. Sing. Okay. So I'm pretty sure we go chasing Shaba. You say is he Osiris? play the game okay so he was the third Kushite king so he is a he's the third Kushite pharaoh so they're saying he's Kushite but his queen is going by a tongue maybe he's marrying of the last dynasty and the 25th dynasty inscription on the king's birth name on the cartouche preceded by Osiris king of upper and lower Again, one of these cats we read, unified upper and lower. Um, so they're claiming he was after Osiris. So But when you got Osiris, Shaba comes up. And the, the Shaba stone and the contendings of Horus and Seth. Come on, man. Cough it up. Abydos is another name. Okay, Memphis is for the Ta. Abydos is for Osiris. So, let's see if they're playing a trick on us. She was buried in Abydos. Shabbos succeeded his uncle Sebetu on the throne. Okay, so maybe it is in here. So they just said Osiris came before Shaba, right? When we look, and then, right? Proceeded by. 
make sure I'm saying this right. Come before. So, oh, his name on the cartouche preceded by the Osiris. So, preceded is dealing with come before, so his name came before Osiris, so he is Osiris. So, his son is Horus. So instead of calling him what his name was, Harimaket, Harimaket, we call him Horus for short. And sometime after, I presume, his death, the Sphinx is built in his honor. That's why his face is on the Sphinx, because, again, if they didn't have cameras that far back, the statue relief is a very you can see the cheekbone curve i mean it's very depicted in it i mean it's it's not any clear okay he is the prince of the and high priest prince and high priest a month of a month right his dad is shabaka i mean shabaka shabaka so let's go into shabaka real quick Archaeological evidence. Now in uh, 2017, uh, firmly favors Seb Iku Shabaka secession, one to the other. Gerald Brokeman paper shows that Seb Iku reigned before Shabaka since the upper. Edge of Shabaka's uh, blah, 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 Kar Karnak Kwan inscription. The upper edge of his inscription was covered, carved over the left hand side of the lower edge of. Okay, so he wrote his name over that shit. All right. Um, this can only mean that Shabaka ruled after because his inscription came later. So just like if you went and some graffiti was one place and you you wanted to put your graffiti up and you know you wrote over somebody else's graffiti and clearly anybody can see yours covered the other one so the other one had to be up first you know critically Frederick uh, blah 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 uh, writes in French uh, the divine adornation adornox or God's wife of Amun or Amen. Shipend, uh, Shipentua the first. Let's see if this one's going to be called Isis. She was the hereditary of God among the political power of Thebes and surrounding regions. She was the first to take on the complete royal titulary with the name on names and uh, two cartouches. Uh, blah 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 blah. I mean, she is the one with the heart of a man and the other. Well, the other woman didn't have any inscriptions like that, did she? Let's find out. This other wife. Oh, they didn't bring the other wife up yet. Uh, uh, the last Libyan uh, Adorna, Adorna, Adornatrix. Executrix Adornatrix. She was still alive during the reign of Shibituku. 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 Because she is representing, represented, performing rites, and is described as living in those parts of Osiris Hak Hajitep Chapel built during his reign. So this chapel is being built during the reign of the previous guy. But again, it can't be the chapel of Osiris if the guy after Shabaka is using the name Osiris. Now, again, if the real Osiris lived previously, that's one thing. But again, you have Horikamet. Am I saying that? Horikamet. Hey, is that your Kemet? Kehet? Kehet ain't Kemet. So this is why they argue Kemet too. 
is they add an M because the inscription probably had an H. They're just not seeing that it was an H instead of an M. And again, you see if you take the top off the H and you look at an H and an E combined, it would look like KMT. So it's not really KMT, it's KHET, and it's still off of what? Horus worship. Do you see Harma or Herma? All right. Didn't it say he was a. No, it said the other woman was a. Here. Now, she's a what? A, a herald. Hereditary, excuse me. All right. Hereditary. So, she inherits her office. All right. So let's go further. In the restroom of the chapel, I presume, because that's what they're talking about, the chapel built during his reign. Uh, it is a men. Idrius is the wife. Okay, so Shabaka's sister, who is represented as the Adonatrix title, and provided with a coronation name, the succession of Shepenupet, Shepenupet, Amenidris as his wife, or divine Adonatrix. Thus took place during the reign of Shibitu. Now again, you do not see any Osiris name there during the reign of Shibitu. You see Amun. This detail in itself is sufficient to show that the region of Shibaka cannot proceed Shibitu. The construction of the tomb represents that of Pai, while that of Shibuku is similar to Tariq. Tariq is the 25th dynasty of Egypt. I thought these guys were the 25th dynasty. He was one of the black pharaohs. Well, clearly, if this is the son of this pharaoh, <laughs> this pharaoh is a black pharaoh too. <laughs> Hey, it's a racist world. It's their reign. So, here's a, so, here's Tariq, the Black Pharaoh. Black Pharaoh. Huh, you gotta love that shit. And the beauty of it is, is all the Pharaoh statues look like black people. So, the idea is just. One of the strongest evidence is evident, the strongest evidence that Shabaku ruled after Sibitu is demonstrated by the archaeology of the Kushite royal pyramids of El Karu. All right, so so here, the high priest of Amun, Harmaket. Son of Shabaka calls himself the king's son of Shabaka, justified, who loves him, sole conf confident, confident of King Tariq, again, the black king. So, again, Sarah Racism, director of the palace of the king of Upper and Lower Egypt. So, this is the king that's, that unifies Upper and Lower. Tenta Tanut Aman or Tan Tam Tantamani, right? May he live forever. So, this guy was a pharaoh, kingdom of Kush, Sudan of the 25th dynasty. His prenomenon or royal name was Bakar, which means glorious, 
is the soul of red. So again, look at how they're pushing these people as Kushites and they're saying that it's a black empire because they're Kushites. Now, just keep that in mind as we move forward. This implied that Haramaka was born. Uh, King Shibitu was already dead, which would favor, he already said he was the confidant of this king. So why would that signify he was dead? Did I read that wrong? It says right here, if he was young under. All right. Oh, boy. So, whoever writes this doesn't quite have all their shit together. But it's better than what we started with. Because when we started, we didn't have much at all. All right, Horus is known from a statue and a fragment found at Karnak. A lady named uh, Mesbat. Mesbat is mentioned on the sarcophagus of Harkamat and maybe his mother. So let's see if Mesbat is Isis. Somebody's going to be Isis, huh? Megabat. Mizbat, uh, no Isis, no Isis. Oh, that's not but photonic sign. That's not gonna be it. No, that's not gonna be it. No, that's not gonna be it. Uh, oh, no. Oh. God, Farrakhan Hillary went crazy this morning. 4 a.m. Seven, seven forty-seven now. That's an airliner. All right. On his throne, he adopted the throne name of the sixth dynasty ruler Pepi Nefer Neferker. Initially, uh, it's fucking numbers don't matter. It's a lie. However, he indicates he died around. Uh, uh, the Sargon the second of Assyria states in his official inscription uh, that it was Shibuku, the predecessor, who extradited Lamani of Ashdod to, to Shibu Shibitku as king of Egypt. This view is accepted by Egyptologists. Okay, so wait. So it's during the time of Sargon. So Sargon the second is one of the kings that, and you just see what it says right here. Extradited. Now you know what extradited is in law. It's removing something, right? Extradite. Handing over. Extradite. All right. Now I'm sitting here like yeah. I'm reading this shit. I'm not going anywhere with this. And then pff, here comes the present. Right? It's a gift. Just a gift. Alright, so here we have the extradited Lamani of Ashdod. So here's Lamani. Let's, let's get into this. See, it's a lowercase, it's a name, right? And let's see, Lamani of Ashdod. Ionian. I, oh, it's not a Lamani, it's a Mani. It, Emmanuel. It, it's an Emmanuel name. Ladna continued the revolt. The Assyrian ruler marched on Ashdod and conquered it. Okay, now. All right, so this is where it gets exciting, all right, because I know this story, all right? This is the I'm trying to write. 
write it correctly. As I wouldn't be writing it All right. Okay, that's good enough. All right, and Syrian captivity. And why is it bringing me here? All right, so we've been here before, right? Okay, so we look at these maps now. Watch this at the map. It says the deportation by Tiglath Pilsner III, 734, 732. Deportation by uh, Salomon Asser and Sargon II. Okay, we've studied this years ago. That's, ladies and gentlemen, that is a complete circle. Yay! We're in the game for a reason. So, what they're talking about here is the deportation. Do you see it right there? Deportation. Deportation of Israel. Now, did you see how they wrote that shit? All right? Uh, that which the king of Egypt at the time, Shabaku's predecessor, who extradited Mamani of Ashdod to Sebeku. He took someone from where they claim Israel is, Ashdod, and he took them to the king of Egypt. Sargon 705. So when we go over to the map, when it hits 722, 20, 724, 729, he's bringing the Israelites out. Right? So he's a king, but he's working like a bounty hunter. You're Boba Fett. This is viewed accepted by Egyptologists today, some of them. But others, because there is no concrete evidence. So again, the dead guy writes, this is what happened in his life. And these people breathing air today say there's no fucking evidence. So these would be Freemasons, and this guy would be the guy that is blackballed. That's why the Wikipedia is telling you the one guy and then the three Freemasons that they stood up in front of them to say no. It says there's no concrete. Okay, so let's read this again. They have an official inscription from from the fucking king of the time <laughs> so it's written in stone right he already told you it's black kings right Your fucking nose busted off big lips you can see what's going on <clears throat> so in the next line because the black king's black and we live in the racist world. The black king's inscription is accepted by many Egyptologists, especially Adrian Dotson. Rolf Claus, oh, especially this, right? Among others, because there's no concrete evidence for parentheses of uh, internal. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm reading this wrong, but it's still it's written like shit. Co-regencies. You see, it written like shit. <laughs> Please, it's, that's not a fucking word. You're calling this an encyclopedia. That's not a word. Co-regencies, plural, right? And then when you say define it, show me it in the, right? And you're like, no, you, you got to separate it. You got to hyphen it. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, you know, it's like, I I get it. You know, I'm, I'm on YouTube. I'm 90% with it, you know. 
bro, you Wikipedia, people write, write documents based off of some of the shit that's written on here. How can you have that? Okay, so, excuse me, many Egyptologists, such as all four of these, uh, they accept this view because it's a king writing in stone, right? And he's, he's okay, so, uh, among others, because there's no concrete evidence that we just read about uh, for co-regencies. So, It's kind of stupid because it's very clear that there are delegates, there are delegations, there are offices of delegation. It's very clear that if I extradite Bob and take him down to Sheba, Shibi Kibidu, then we have some kind of relationship that he reigns in his shit and I reign in mine. But if it overlaps, there has to be some kind of we stay cool. Now, the idea of co regency during a time of empires that are all sitting on top of each other, I don't know, they have to share something. But they're saying that internal or internally in the Nubian kingdom of the 25th, and that's what they're calling it. They're calling it, they call it the Nubian kingdom. God knows why they call it the Nubian kingdom, right? Because let us look. Holy God. Relating to Nubia. All right, Nilo, Sarah. All right, so Nilo goes into Nithalic. So I guess this is Ridiculous Day. Um, and on Ridiculous Day, when we type in words, we're just going to get bullshit. Um, when we type things in, we're going to get like, we couldn't find your shit, type in cupcake. All right, so here, <laughs> so, ah, here you have Song Hai. Oh, boy. All this circled back. Okay. I presume it's denial. Nicknaming things off of the Nile. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Nubian. So, most likely a tribe that is raised off of the Nile. That's gonna be my my best my best bet. Um Shaba died in the fifth regional year based on the BMQ statue. Uh, 
and it's not gonna say how he died. I'm pretty sure he's chopped up um thirteen pieces. Uh I don't know. I'm kind of wanting to end this video. I know if I end this video, then, like, when I'm cleaning this up, something's going to pop up, and I'm going to be like, oh, I wish I had that in the video. So let's just scroll down here before we go over what's left. Uh, this, is, this is all brief. Uh, son of Shavaka, justified who loves him, soul confident of the king Tariq. And again, and this is about when is Tariq alive? Because uh, I get it if he's if Horus is born after Seb who dies, but and Shabaka takes over. I, I get it, but you know I'm just trying to figure it all out. So if uh, blah blah blah, and Tariq looks like a young man. Excuse me, Hormaket looks like a young man. He's not well defined with with like you know he's not. Doesn't have a big chest. It doesn't show up anything of. I've reached. Thirty in this image, you know, looks very young, very fresh in this image. Um. You see, they don't have his death or anything like that. Oh, after his death, here we go. <clears throat> Noticeably in the inscription, King Shibitku. Who commonly assumed to have ruled between Shabaku and Tariq, that just doesn't make any sense, is completely absent. Now, again, if, like, 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 like I said, if he's the confidant of Tariq, and Tariq is before Sibitu, how did, it, how is, how is he born, how is Horus born? After this guy dies, but is old enough to be fucking confident of the guy who ruled before. That doesn't make any sense. Right? That's just why they're arguing, why is this guy completely absent in the inscription? Indeed, the inscription was among the seminal evidence supporting the recent chronological switch between the reigns of Shabaku and Sibitu. Oh, see, this is what's going on. Okay. So that would make sense uh, because they're, this is the confusion they're having. Because it's the inscription confusion. Because this dude's name is written on top of this guy. They believe this guy's first. Because Tariq is talked about, and Tariq is first, then she. Shibit is second, and then Shaba is third. In order of kings, and they're they're, they're basically having an argument, uh, you know, trying to figure out if the order is correct. All right. In prior, right, the recent chronological switching between the reigns of Shabaku and Shibitu. With Shibitu reigning first and Shibaku succeeding him, as we have been reading. And I presume this is why we don't hear that much of this, because, again, they're arguing amongst themselves in their own community about who who's on first base. After his death, Harmakat was succeeded by a son, Harkhibi, who is known to have been in charge of the high priest of Amman at the time of the Nika Christ's first adaptation, adapt, adoption, and later, thus during the reign of the founder of the 26th dynasty. So, who is this Nika Christ? Nit, Nit, Nitocris, Divine Adornatrix. Adornatrix is a woman, and Adornatrix is a male. Served as heir, then as the divine adoratress of Amun, or no, adoratress is a woman? Priestess. Got to get so wait. So he was succeeded by his son, who is known to have been in charge as high priest in the time of this woman's 
rule. Okay. All right, Faircon Hitler's up. Give me a minute. Give me good. Just start screaming. Give me home. All right, so we go down here. Finish this up. And We don't need a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, then you have Shaba being said in music. All the different times Shaba is said in music, you have to wonder why Shabba is said so much in music. I think I'll close it out. I wasn't paying attention. Um, Shabba itself. Uh, uh, okay. Good. Continue did that. Uh, look, we accidentally did something and found something a little bit interesting, but I'm not going to get too far into that. They say it's observance. When you go to Shaba itself, uh, it means to swear, all right? The seven, affirmation sevenfold. So, you know, this is to hold up your hand and take an oath. This is why it says, you know, take no oath. I've given you an oath. Uh, Ten Commandments. If you get into this video that is, uh, I don't know, without this video, I don't think we would have looked on this path because they give this name, Armachias, and it turns out to show who the real human is that people call Horus today. And when you see his name, Armachias, you can see why they call him Horus. You know, they get the, rid of the M-A in the C, the Mac. I mean, even if you just take the H out, it's harsh. Um, so, when you go a little bit further and stuff, uh, in this video, it's going to talk about a person who studies some of the language, and he's going to bring the person's name up. I just didn't get the time yet. I don't want to add too much of this video to give them a reason to take this down or anything, you know. Um, but it's going to come to uh, the language. Uh, one of the language being used is going to be a uh, person's going to say it comes from the Kamari in early Welsh. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this and try to find this so this part makes sense. Mm -hmm. Fair use. Robot talks for us. Fair use. All right, so here we have. He says, I had me sold in the 19th century. According to the book, The Sphinx Revealed, which put According to the book, The Sphinx Revealed, which published the memoirs of Henry Salt, he says, over on the northern platforms in the subterranean chamber were found some Roman characters smoked with the flame of a candle, and rudely formed so as to be quite unintelligible. A circumstance partly attributed to the rock having mouldered away, especially between the letters H and M. Most probably the effects of damp, the whole chamber bearing indeed evident marks of moisture. We also have accounts by Herodotus, Strabo and Pliny to name but a few, but not many people know that the Romans left writing inside the Great Pyramid as well as the outside. But So here he's talking about the Romans being inside because of the Latin inscriptions. Uh, the Latin characters being inside, but the Romans didn't speak Latin. They were fighting the Latin. Some of the writers wrote in Latin, but not all. I mean, it's just, it's not really, you know. Having one side of the pyramid dedicated to the Hebrew language is certainly an interesting discovery. 
Hebrew is regarded as the language of the Israelites and their ancestors, and we know that Egypt features heavily in the Old Testament, making it an important place for the ancient Jewish people. I made a video in recent months showing how I believe the Biblical Moses Okay, so... It's all nonsense, uh, the rest of it. I can't really find that part. It must be in, in the earlier parts. Um, and I'm not going to get too hung up on it. Basically, he comes uh, with a language, uh, brings up the Smeri or C-M-R-U, the early Welsh. Uh, and it's going to show that one of these languages are uh, coming out of the Welsh area. And then again, I mean, it's going to lead down the Wales. And then it's going to lead, uh, you know, I can always take it back to different surnames especially my own coming out of wales uh while uh well fair is about to make my day just real bad so i'm going to get ended here because we need some uh some personal attention we need some private time uh private play time you want to say bye to everybody No jumping. No. Too early. Good. Maybe I can get you back to sleep. Get you fast, Dad. All right, everybody. I hope you have a good day. May the Most High be with you and bless you. Bye.